Hi everyone, it's Melissa and today I am going to share with you the books that I read during February. So we're going to start with something that I read throughout the entirety of January and finally finished in February and that was um, The Dragon Bone Chair by Tad Williams. I am participating in a read-along hosted by Rick McDonald. Um, but this is the first in a trilogy. This was the book for January but it took me a while to read because there was a lot of really rich world world building that I ended up enjoying but it just took a long time to kind of get into the book and um, I am a slow reader anyway and um, this slowed me down even more. There was like a lot of geography, a lot of characters, a lot of people and places to get to know, um, language, like all those things that I love about epic fantasy but that do take um, a little bit of time. I particularly enjoyed the very last section of this book. The action picks up a little bit. We start to learn a few like secrets, I guess. Like just all sorts of things start happening towards the end. I am very happy to be continuing um, with this trilogy, but definitely happy I am through the first book because um, it did take a while to get into. The next thing I want to mention is uh, A Streetcar Named Desire, um, the play by Tennessee Williams. And this is something I read as part of a video series or like a vlogging series I'm doing where I read like things that are really, really famous and try to see if I can guess what's going to happen based on like pop culture references. Um, and this is, was not at all what I was expecting, but I really, really loved it. And it's one of those things where it's like, okay, now I understand why it's famous. Like I get the hype, all that kind of stuff. But it's set in New Orleans and it follows um, Blanche Dubois and she comes to um, stay with her sister Stella and Stella's husband Stanley and it really is kind of like I feel an examination of like women's lives like especially at this time but I think a lot of this holds true but like examination of women's lives in terms of um, their lack of uh, choice in life or the you know the paths that women are placed on and like the abuse that women um, are forced to endure and I, I just thought it was so great. Um, if you haven't read it like I would highly recommend it. It's a bit heavier than I thought it would be. Um, like I knew it was a serious play but it was um, like parts of it I was like I was really feeling it, you know? So yeah, I really, really enjoyed that and it has inspired me to pick up some more Tennessee Williams. The next thing I want to talk about is a poetry collection called Felon by Reginald Dwayne Betts. So this is poetry about being a felon, about being um, in prison and someone uh, like post-prison. Um, Betts is, like he spent time in prison, um, but then he also went to well, I want to say Harvard Law. He went to, I think, a pretty prestigious law school, if I remember correctly, and is like a defense attorney as well. So he offers like a really unique perspective of um, someone who has like been in the system um, at two different uh, like ends of the spectrum, like as a prisoner um, and like as an attorney. So like that was really interesting. Um, the collection deals a lot with um, obviously like prison, but not not so much like prison life itself, but more about um, like how that weighs on the person and um, how being free, like once you're out of prison, um, doesn't doesn't really constitute freedom, that you're still like um, under a lot of constraint after you're out of prison and how that experience sticks with you post-prison. So like that was really um, interesting and impactful. Um, I think one of my favorite poems was definitely one that was um, based on, he took snippets from real life bail hearings. And um, that one I thought was like particularly well done. Um, I will say that I found the poetry quite interesting, but I think um, uh, for some of them, I, I wanted to unpack a little bit more and I almost would have preferred them as essays. I would love to read um, like an essay collection by him. I think that would be so interesting. Um, but overall, um, I enjoyed it. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. So um, 
this is a book I've picked up because um, I've heard of Zora Neale Hurston. I haven't read anything by her, so like I like to give authors a try, right? Um, and also this is set in the 30s, and that's just a time period that I'm very drawn to. Um, but I mean, the time period really, this could have been set at any time. It wouldn't have mattered. It's so not about the time period. It's so not about the plot. This is very much a character driven story, which is normally not my thing. And like, I like good characters, but um, I am a, like a plot motivated person, I guess, um, normally. Um, but I do enjoy a good character uh, driven book, um, depending on whose hands I'm in. And I think um, the writing was what really sold me on this because like I said, I, I do, I like a little bit of a meaty plot. Um, so if you're just going to have a story about a character, um, the writing has to be like substantial for me personally. Zora Neale Hurston's writing is so like poetic. Um, like a lot of imagery that is just very like evocative and I think like her writing was really up my alley. I, I like things that are kind of like poetic, lyrical, that kind of thing. I wouldn't call it like flowery, but um, it, it wasn't like that like sharp, uh, precise, like blunt type of writing. So if that's your writing style, like preference, like I probably wouldn't recommend this. But if you like that kind of like lyrical type of writing, then like definitely read this. Um, I guess I should tell you what it's about a little bit. So we follow a character called um, Janie and it's really just about her like as she moves from like a teenager to an adult and like close to middle age and it's about like her moving kind of like from relationship to relationship and how she builds her life um, over time and how she like tries to make her life her own and how a lot of times like she can't do that and um and yeah it was very much about kind of like self-actualization I guess and like um becoming who who you want to be. I did enjoy that she was quite a complex character. I think this probably wouldn't have been for me if she was like a little too perfect or a little too this or a little too that. I really enjoyed how like I wavered between, you know, being completely on her side and like, yes, like, you know, you show them and that kind of stuff versus like, why, why would you do that? Why would you say that? Like, um, like she's a person, like she isn't perfect and she does things that maybe I didn't agree with. Um, but overall I was on her side, <laughs> but anyway, I just, I really, um, enjoyed the writing more than anything else in this book. And, um, I'm definitely very, very glad that I read it. The next thing I want to talk about is Black Flamingo by Dean Adda. This is a book told in verse. It's a young adult and it is about um, a young man. Like it starts when he's about, I think, six or so years old and it moves um, through his teenage years and as he's starting college and kind of like finding himself. It's a coming of age story, um, but he is battling with like a lot of different identities. He's mixed race and... Um, he is also um, struggles because of um, not feeling connected to like um, the Greek side of his family because um, like he can't speak Greek. Um, and also he is gay and um, kind of like struggles with that a little bit in the novel. And it's about him kind of like becoming the Black Flamingo, which is his drag persona. Um, I really, really, really liked this. Young adult is something that I think by and large is really not for me, but every once in a while I find a, a gem in there. So I, I always kind of like try out the ones that um, have been recommended to me. And um, yeah, this one did not disappoint. What I really think I liked about this um, was like the family dynamic um, between like him and his mother and his sister and also like the friendships, I guess all of the relationships, I shouldn't just say family dynamics, all of the relationships between like friends and the other students and like his mom and um, I just really liked that. I thought that was really well done. And something else I appreciated was um, that there are some like difficult topics talked about because of course he's gay and like, that's not always accepted. Um, but it, it talks about those things without ever really getting super heavy. Um, and heavy stories are, like, important. Like, that's fine. But I think um, 
if you are someone who maybe you want a queer story that's not like misery porn, then this is it. Um, it's very heartwarming and sweet and uplifting. Um, and he does go through difficult and challenging times, but nothing ever um, feels like, um, it never feels like you're weighed down when you're reading it. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, and the last book I want to talk about is Hidden Figures. Um, this is a nonfiction I think most people are familiar with. Um, what's the author's name? Margot Lee Shetterly. Um, and this is about um, the women computers, so like mathematicians essentially, who were employed um, at NASA, well first at the Langley Research Center and then what later became NASA. Um, and um, they were black female mathematicians and that's what is kind of like unique about this story. And it follows um, a few women from like the 1940s into like the 60s and the space age. And um, I think I found the story very interesting. I'm glad I read it because I did want to learn more about this time in history and and about that specific moment in history. And it was really interesting. And I think it's definitely an important story to be told. I did find it a bit dry. And there were a lot of times where I felt that the women were kept a bit at arm's length. And I wished it was written in a way that it didn't necessarily need to be like a, like a narrative nonfiction per se, but I would have liked to feel more like those women were real. Like there were times when um, they didn't feel real to me and like they're obviously real people. So um, yeah, I think I would have preferred something that was tweaked just slightly to feel like you were getting to know the women more and, and um, could like root for them almost in a way as you were reading it. Um, but I still like enjoyed it overall and I learned a ton about like kind of what went down at like NASA and how like the social climate and like civil rights and stuff at the time affected like the hiring practices at different places and like how it came to be that these black women were um, recruited for these jobs. Um, it was just all very, very interesting. So those were the books that I read for February. If you've read any of them or want to read them and want to have a chat below, please um, leave a comment and I hope everyone's doing well and thank you as always for watching and we'll chat soon. Take care.